Hello, lacrosse friends, and welcome back for more PBL action from Elmira, New York, on a stormy night down here in upstate New York. I'm Stephen Stamp, pleased to be bringing you this action. We have the Syracuse Spark against the hometown Elmira Renegades. Second game of the day. The earlier game, the Jim Thorpe All-Americans with their second straight win in this Jim Thorpe Challenge. A 16-12 win over Binghamton. They had beaten Syracuse 16-11 last week. And the second game last week, these Elmira Renegades against Binghamton. That was a 22-19 final for Elmira. We got the uh, players being introduced. Hello, lacrosse friends, and welcome back for more PBL action from Elmira, New York, on a stormy night down here in upstate New York. I'm Stephen Stamp, pleased to be bringing you this action. We have the Syracuse Spark against the hometown Elmira Renegades. Second game of the day. The earlier game, the Jim Thorpe All-Americans with their second straight win in this Jim Thorpe Challenge. A 16-12 win over Binghamton. They had beaten Syracuse 16-11 last week. And the second game last week, these Elmira Renegades against Binghamton. That was a 22-19 final for Elmira. We got the uh, players being introduced. All right, the Star Spangled Banner is in the books, and we are ready to roll with PBL action. Officials tonight, Herbie John, John Civic, and Clint Doolittle. The starting goaltenders for Elmira. We've got Gage Stevens between the pipes for Brian Hobart's Renegades. Brian Hobart, the head coach. On the other side, Ron Kogan is the head coach of the Spark, and their netminder to start will be Edmund Cathers. So the way this tournament is working, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, because the, the PBLA league, the season had to be terminated uh, partway through. Uh, so the, I know the players, the coaches, a lot of people worked very hard, along with uh, Mammoth Sports Entertainment, to make this end of season, these end of season tournaments happen, there are two. One is the Jim Thorpe Challenge with the four closely located teams, Elmira, Binghamton, Syracuse, and Jim Thorpe All-Americans. And they are playing four doubleheader weekends. They played last weekend, this weekend, going again next weekend, and then a uh, week off, no, yes, next weekend, and then a week off, and then one more weekend, and then a championship weekend in early April, the uh, 7th, 8th, or 8th, and on the St. Patrick's Day weekend, March 17th to 19th, will be the Players Invitational. The seven of the nine teams that were competing in the PBLA, they will be competing in the Players Invitational of the PBL, Players Box Across. And that should be a fun one. Nine, nine games over three days to crown a Players Invitational champion. Here's the first possession and looking for the first shot is Owen Hill. He gets it off under some serious pressure from Bill O'Brien and Nate Schultzke. Now Josh Harris trying to get it. And eventually it's Cathers coming away with the ball for Syracuse wearing their bright orange. They wore the dark jerseys last week in shorts. A lot, of everyone seemed to like them. I think the opinions are mixed on the orange. I don't mind them. I think, you know, his uniforms, they're visible. Here's a drive to the net. Holding penalty coming the first of the game as Dylan Lyons takes a drive to the net. Nick Miller will pick it up. He's wondering what's going on. He missed the call. There is a holding penalty coming. Now, if you are familiar with the PBLA from earlier in the year, there were two penalty shots per team, per half that teams could take instead of a minor penalty power play. Or if there was a major, they could take a penalty shot and a minor. But it is now down to one. That was a lot of penalty shots which was realized it's a pretty fun idea and adds some excitement. Now, we're going to check with, going to check with Ron Kogan. Oh. Maybe getting a too many men call as well. Wow, so that'll make it five on three for the Spark. What an opportunity to get off to a quick start. Now, they are missing some of their offensive spark. In particular, Skylar Thomas not available tonight. He is the guy you probably all fell in love with in the first game of the PBLA season. He was spectacular for the spark, scoring some sensational penalty shot goals and some even more sensational play goals in the run of play. There's a backdoor, backdoor quick stick attempt 
does not quite connect as Ross Cree was trying to tap that one home. Sorry, that was uh, Sky Sunday on the back door. Here is Justin McKinney with a bouncer right into the crest. Hit that sparkle muffin on the chest of Emmon Cathers, and it's a break, but it's left behind by Sky Sunday. Nice hustle by Joe Menicola to get over on him, and the Renegades come up with it. Menicola dropped the ball and wound up in some pressure, and now we've got a penalty coming to Sky Sunday on the forecheck. The eight second count will happen, but that is gonna be a nice forced turnover by Sunday, except they're not gonna get the ball because he is going to the bench to the penalty box for high sticking for two minutes or less. So that will make it four on three for the spark for a minute and 11 seconds. And then they'll have both their players will get out. Jimmy Chadwick is in there for Elmira. And Logan Maloney, sorry, Lucas Maloney. I think Chadwick must have been the holding call. I think Maloney is probably the in-home. It's just a guess. Could be the other way around. Ball scooped up by Owen Hill. Again, lots of pressure, this time from Wade Buckley. But Owen Hill evades it. Gets the ball ahead to Dwight Barrow Jr. Barrow has it popped out. Nice work by Casey Swamp. And Tommy Palasek scoops it up in that slick all-black rig where you can actually see the ball. Hands it over to the near side. Wade Bucktooth, they're gonna take their time, setting up this four on three. Really not a lot of difference generally from the five on three, because most times you'll have somebody back. Although they were running all five in. Rio Johnson with the bouncer from the outside, that one's turned aside. They get it back for a fresh 30. Palisak looking for something. Didn't have a shot, so he decides to pass it off. Comes to Rio Johnson, lots of time behind the back. Ripped from the outside by Wade Bucktooth, but Gage Stevens saw it all the way, and he'll just leave it there for Justin McKinney, who's got a man down the floor. They're trying to push the pace. Kevin McNally. Thinking about going now. The Renegades get their two players out. Chadwick and Maloney come out. It's a five on four, ripped from the outside. Cathers has this behind him. Chadwick tried to reach into the crease to grab it. Look, like he was just hitting the end of a stick, so it wouldn't have counted anyway. You can go into the crease with your stick to get the ball, but you have to possess it in the mesh of your stick. You can't just tap it in with the, with the frame. Syracuse with 15 seconds to kill on the power play, on their penalty kill. And the Renegades power play, of course. Up to the top to Dylan Lyons. Shot by Rio Johnson, reaching around Nick Miller. The save, and here's the outlet pass. Oh, Bradley Voigt was hoping that ball would get there, but great hustle by Lyons to get back and break that one up. Cather's pass is knocked down, but Rio Johnson is all about the BTB tonight, and it works out pretty well. Sky Sunday will take that pass down in the corner and slow things down, go back to Hank Delisle at the top. Here's Johnson. Again, the BTB. <laughs> Jay Chubb thought about it, originally taking the behind the back, waited, and then through the pass out, they do get a shot off, but that's stopped. Here comes Nick Miller. Four minutes in already. Nobody able to get on the board yet. Miller runs into a wall in Justin Napolitano. Nice strip. Now he's looking for some help, and he's got to get up. He's only got two seconds to get it over center, and he's just going to fling it ahead. Nice defensive play by Napolitano, but kind of got lost in his own zone, not finding the outlet pass. Napolitano who burst onto the scene in the World Juniors in Saskatoon back in 2018. Oh, here's a chance. Owen Hill turned aside by Edmund Cathers. Yeah, Napolitano who's just a, a flash of lightning all over the floor that summer. Wound up going uh, out to Coquitlam to try and play some Junior A. Didn't quite work out. And uh, he's been kind of bouncing around a bit in some leagues, but he is excited to be here in the PBL. Brent Logan moved it ahead, and Lucas Maloney is going to slow things down a little as the Renegades just finishing up their change. Jeff Geddes over to Miller. He's going to let that fly. No, he pulls it down and left a drop pass. Managed to actually flick it to Waylon Abrams as he was falling. That's a pretty nifty play by Miller, but eventually it's Casey Swamp. We don't see him running with the ball a lot. He's moving pretty well for a big dude, and he scores! Casey Swamp, coast to coast, almost coast, to the other coast, buries it flying down the floor and tucks that one home.
The attempt to grab it by Waylon Abrams, but it just got away from him. And Casey Swamp off to the races. Unbelievable running right by Jeff Geddes. And Casey Swamp, that's the first goal of the game. 5-24 in, it's one nothing spark. Shot off the face off by Geddes. Okay, there's no problem with that one. He'll bounce one out to Jay Chubb who's heading up the floor. Leaves it for Rio Johnson. Johnson, sensationally talented. Still a young man figuring some things in the game out. But boy, has he got that behind the back down pat. That's a nice passing play, but Gage Stevens swallows up the shot from Dan Rogers, making an unusual offensive foray as well. <laughs> Rogers on his way to the bench, gives Owen Hill a little pop, just making sure he knows that they're still paying attention to him. Voigt with the rip and what goes between the wickets of Cathers, but pings off his foot, his heel, and then over off the post. Bill O'Brien comes up with it. The Spark defenders running in transition. O'Brien's gonna pull up as he hands it off to Sky Sunday. So if you're not familiar with the rules, the big difference here is the change rule. You have to come off the floor by your defensive door, the door closest to your goalie. And you come on the floor by your offensive door, the far one farthest from your goalie, which leads to some tremendous transition as with you know regular box cross transition or change rules when you're coming out of your defensive zone. But when you're coming back from O to D, you had better hustle back and play some D because you are gonna lose twice the length of the bench as you go to the D door and then somebody comes out the O door and then has to run back and play D. So it really forces transition defense. Here's Dwight Barrow Jr. Uh, this looks like a high stick on Jeff Geddes. A cross check kind of slid up the back, got up under the back of the helmet. Barrow to O'Brien, he drops it. Chadwick's gonna try and pick it up and drop and, and cause play to be blown down. Yeah, it's a high sticking call for Geddes, so he'll go to the box and the spark. Let's see, yeah, they're gonna take their penalty shot. Now it's interesting because they're, I think Hank Delisle's gonna take it. He's standing out at center. Because normally Skylar Thomas takes most of the penalty shots. When he doesn't, Caleb Benedict steps in. Hank Delisle, marvelously talented, smaller player. Interesting to see the approach he takes. We've seen Thomas just go airborne a lot. And, Go across, either reach far side and tuck it inside the post, or dive across and tuck it back near side. Here comes Delisle, we'll see what his move is. He's going wide, Gage Stevens, left foot on that post, coming out with him. Oh, and trickles down the leg pad. Stevens gets just enough. Looks like Delisle may have gotten it over him. Stevens gets a little bit and it rolls down the leg pad. Jeff Geddes came running out thinking he is freed, but I believe the players are having to serve the two minutes. So at 5.43, he'll be released. And we go to the face off. Austin Finger taking the draw for the Renegades wearing their burgundy and black. But it, Ross Cree rips it back between his legs for the spark. Number 77, but it was picked up by the Renegades. Bill O'Brien battling the ball a little bit early tonight, but it is gonna be picked up by Tim Zimmel, who's trying to run through everybody and turns the ball over. Or does he? Syracuse wanted it over and back on Manicola. I'm not sure they just uh, judged that he had had possession in the offensive zone, but it doesn't matter because the Swarming spark defense strips the ball. Dan Rogers is going to hand it off. He'll stay for the O shift. There's Palasek down deep. Oh, Dwight Barrow. Or sorry, Carmen Papa. Was there a delayed penalty coming? Is with Papa had that chance. They've got the extra attacker out. Schultzke with the shot. That one's blocked. Grabbed by Miller. So Syracuse has already used their penalty shot for the half. So it will be. Joe Menicola heading to the box for two minutes or less. So 
It's an interference call on Menicola. Cathers goes back to, back to his bench, and we will have our first media timeout with 6.51 to go in the first quarter. one nothing, an extraordinarily low-scoring game for PBL action, but it's been exciting, and we'll be back on the Cross TV right after this. And here we go, ready to roll with the Syracuse Spark power play. But Dylan Lyons up at the top as they go left strong. Jimmy Chadwick and Justin McKinney are the defenders up at the top on the penalty kill with Logan Monroe down at the bottom along with Josh Harris. The save by Gage Stevens and Harris is gonna make a break for it out of his own end. Watch there by Sky Sunday. Nice twister pass all alone. What a finish. Short-handed Barry by Carson Reese. Great play by Harris to get through the forechecking pressure. Make a lovely twister pass ahead. And then just a floater to the far top corner by Carson Reese. Not going to quite catch the pass on there, but look at that shot. Carson Reese, deadly accurate. There we get the pass. Look at that beauty. And Reese just all alone. Wow. Don't often see somebody get that wide open on the short man, short handed situation. So the shorty makes it 1 1. Syracuse still has a minute and a half on the power play. McKinney's just going to take his time. Syracuse, no pressure, just a little token from Napolitano. Syracuse really just kind of sitting back. Now O'Brien gets out on Chadwick. Who Takes a couple of whacks and then we'll head to the bench. Harris comes out, he's gonna stay in the offense or in the defensive zone. And McKinney will come back. Owen Hill heads to the bench for a change. Pretty good bench management there. By the Renegades. And McNally now getting to the bench as Syracuse pretty slow getting their guys out to go on the power play. Here's Rio Johnson. Just getting Delilah is the fifth guy up at the top. Johnson. Delisle back to Rio Johnson, he scores! What a beautiful bouncer. Nice little behind the back flip from Delisle and Rio Johnson bounds that one home up over the shoulder, I believe, of Gage Stevens. No, it wasn't a bouncer, he just fired it and Stevens got a bit of it. That's what made it change direction. Oh no, it was a bouncer, my mistake. It was right the first time. Definitely a beautiful bouncer. Hit the ground about three, two or three feet in front of Stevens and up over the arm as he went down. Power play goal for Rio Johnson here is Tommy Palasek. Ducks underneath Geddes, Geddes recovers. There's Johnson again. He's dangerous, hands it off. Goes to set a pick. Gets the pass on the roll. Tries the similar shot from in closer. That one just a little bit wide. I think it did go off of Stevens. Here's Jimmy Chadwick on his own. Oh, almost recreated the Carson Reese goal as he went for that far side. Used his teammate as a decoy and ripped it from his offside and off the top of the crossbar and up into play. Fresh 30 for the Renegades and the rip. Nick Miller, now Carson Reese behind the back, beauty. Carson Reese going to his right. Saw Cathers traveling across the crease, across the goal line with him. And went back against the green behind the back. That is lovely. That was very similar in terms of the bounce to the goal at the other end that we just saw from Rio Johnson, except this one was behind the back on the run. Ross Cree comes up with the ball. He's going one on four at the net, and he is pounded into the boards by Logan and Monroe. Threw me for a second because it's Brett Logan and Logan Monroe. It sounded like I was repeating myself. Here's Owen Hill, nice outlet pass. The man off the bench, Wes Whitlow, on his offside, tries to spin, Schultz, Schultzke on him. Owen Hill, nice move to get free, but the stop by Edmund Cathers, who was ready for it. Meyer Whitlow's a good player, but 
You really want to have a lefty coming off the bench first. In the transition there. Here's Hank Delisle. Speaking of the lefties. Bradley Voigt. <laughs> really watching his back, but still loses the man he's worried about picking him, Dylan Lyons. Lyons, a nice little sidestep to get open. Gets the shot off at Stevens, turns it aside. Oh, Nick Miller gets away with one. Now he's going to get called on that one. The cross check to the side of the neck, I thought might get called. But the second bump results in a pair of hands going up. There's a long outside shot. It'll be grabbed by Josh Harris, and that'll blow play down. And it's going to be the high sticking call for Nick Miller. Dylan Lyons once again, he's really been looking quick and sparky out there for the spark. He'll hand it off, gets it back. Let's one fly, that's a little bit wide. Came straight out to Palisac. That will not be wide. That one is buried in the top corner over the shoulder of Gage Stevens. So the uh, missed shot turns into a pass and Tommy Palisac makes the most of it. I believe it was Wade Bucktooth that ripped the original shot. So the spark go up three to two. Austin Finger and Dan Rogers at the dot for the draw. It popped out, neither of them knew where it was. Tommy Palasek was the first guy in there. He got away from him, but he did recover it. Gets through the check from Lucas Maloney. May have flung that one a little bit zesty for Dan Rogers, who couldn't quite handle the pass. And away with it come the Renegades. Logan Monroe breaking out. Illegal pick called, actually illegal body check called on Wes Whitlow. And Nate Schultzke, the man who was illegally body checked, brings it up, leaves it there for Rio Johns. Oh, nice no luck pass, but missing it was Napolitano. Boy, he wants that one back. Cather's with the save. Renegade's taking their time to get started here. After that one went up and out of play, McNally lobs it over, just getting their fifth attacker on the floor. Carson Reese is coming in, he's the late guy. Whitlow flips it to him. Reese, toe drag, shot far side. Cather's just got it. it. Looked like Reese might have another spot. Don't think he got it quite as close to the post as he was hoping. Cather's was able to swallow it up. Here's Napolitano. That is what we saw tons of in Saskatoon. Those wheels heading up the floor. Then he is rammed into the boards by McNally. Some help and the ball is stripped. It goes on to the back side of the match of the net. And Gage Stevens has it. Looking for the long bomb outlet. Gets it through. Waylon Abrams is determined to get a shot off. And the rebound comes right back out to him. It's actually snagged by Bradley Voigt. Voigt, one hand reach, shovel pass. Pretty nice job, but Waylon Abrams couldn't get it. Here comes Napolitano on the run. On his offside again, shoots. Stopped by Gage Stevens. Wasn't sure where that one was. It was underneath him. He just stayed still and they break it up to Owen Hill. Whitlow to Austin Finger. Here's Nick Miller. This one's Whitlow. That one's off the, looks like it's off the face of Edmund Cathers. We have a penalty call coming. John Civic has his hand up. It's going to be a holding call on Dwight Biro Jr. Holding the stick. Sorry, holding the stick on Biro. Now, let's look to the Elmira bench. Will they, with 109 to go in the first quarter, use their penalty shot for the half? Yes, they will. They're going to try and even things up, and Owen Hill is already at center, ready to take it. He is deadly. I mean, he's deadly at the best of times, and you put him in there all alone on the goalie, and 
It's almost unfair how good this guy is. Edmund Cathers, though, will not be bowed. He's going to try and come out and stop this penalty shot, which would even things up. And what's been a fairly low-scoring game so far? Here comes Hill. Not too wide. A few fakes as he likes to. Oh, goes for the far post as he is wont to do. And Cathers throws out the right hand. Turns that one aside. That's a pretty nice save. Sorry, it's Wade Bucktooth that's in the box. Yeah, a little tweak, players who take a penalty and a penalty shot is the option. They will still have to go and serve the two minutes. Similar to having a, uh, when you have a major and the team scores two goals on it, you still have to serve the rest of the penalty. Geddes takes it after the face-off win. Still 3-2 into the final minute of this first quarter. I'm Steven Stamp. Thanks for being with us on the Cross TV for PBL Action. We'll be back with you next Friday. Might just have a double header. You never know. We'll see how things are looking. Bounce shot. <laughs> that was a bit of a knuckleball. Not sure what happened, but Cathers crossed up, did get it, and then his pass was actually tipped by Whitlow, but did get through to Palasek. Three on two. Palasek to Rio Johnson. That's a goal. He just kind of hops up in the air. Reaches out and tucks it home. I'm not sure. The, we'll see on the replay. I'm not sure the jump actually got him any closer to where he was going, but it at least got him horizontal and him reach out. There's the celebration. Oh, you know what? No, Rio, Rio Johnson did actually get across. Looked like he just kind of hopped up, but no, he got some travel and got it over to the far side. Really did take advantage of that jump to tuck that one home and double the lead to four to two, which is 23 seconds left to spark have it back. So after the penalty shot stopped from Owen Hill, the quick response by Rio Johnson. Now here's Dwight Biro Jr. Ricochet scores. That one pinballed around several times. Gage Stevens, the post, his arm all over the place, but it did get home. And it's a five to two game. What a turn of events. Oh, Gage Stevens is not gonna be happy with himself on that one because he had so much of the ball, but it just kept gradually making its way through. And with five seconds to go, looks like we're gonna run out of time in scoring. <laughs> Whitlow trying to avoid the over and back. He won't, but the time was running out anyway. And through 15 minutes of play, it's the Syracuse Spark 5. Elmira Renegades 2, I'm Steven Stamp. This is PBL on Lacrosse TV. We'll see you in a couple minutes. We're ready to roll lacrosse friends with quarter number two in PBL action here at First Arena in Elmira. It is a stormy night in upstate New York, but it is warm and the action is hot inside the first arena. And we have a penalty right off the bat. It's gonna be a holding the holding the stick again call, I believe, John Civic. Holding and a high stick. I was wondering, it's not holding the stick, it's holding and a high stick. So that is gonna be four minutes. Oh, well, Ron Kogan saying it's, it's just one penalty, right? But they're definitely, or is it two different players? No, they still got Bucktooth in there serving his penalty that was uh, the, where um, Elmira took the penalty shot. Yeah, it is. So it's two for holding it, two for the high stick for Tim Zimmel. So four minutes. Back-to-back -back power plays. Bradley Voigt tried to flick it out. That's going to be over and back as Waylon Abrams couldn't get it. And Dan Rogers is hustling. He's not going to be able to start right there. He's got to go into the corner. You can't start the play up in a situation like that where the ball's rolled out right in front of the, the net. And now we're going to have... Okay, so the refs have called play down. Looks like Syracuse had... You know, they've got four players on the floor. That's fine. The penalty didn't go up on the scoreboard, and I think there may have been some confusion about whether it should be five on three. I think I think Clint Doolittle got a little confused because 
Wade Bucktooth was still in there and Zimmel goes in. So he was thinking it's five on three with both penalties at once, not the five on four for four minutes. Don't know why they're not up on the uh, scoreboard. But all is well. Now the scoreboard operators are asking you know, what they should be doing. Okay, so I think the uh, scoreboard operators just weren't sure how to go about putting the double minor up. Kirby John explaining it where he wants it. As I believe he's saying it was at 14.45, just 15 seconds in. So they're 35 seconds into this first penalty. So they've got the two up. That'd be for the second one. First one should, it should actually just say three. Uh, well, 35 seconds in. So it should just say 3.25. Here we go, up to three. So one reminder, we do have weekly double header games among these four teams, Syracuse and Elmira that you're seeing play now, Binghamton and Jim Thorpe, who played earlier tonight with Jim Thorpe winning that one, 16 to 12 to move to two and O on the, oh, it's 315 left in the penalty. Two and O on this Jim Thorpe Challenge Tournament. Since Elmira beat Binghamton last week, Syracuse lost to Jim Thorpe. That means this 0-1 Spark Club really wants to get a win. All four teams will make the championship weekend. There'll be two semifinals with first playing fourth, second playing third, and then the next day, the championship game itself to crown the Jim Thorpe Challenge winners. And again, March 17th to 19th, a couple games on the Friday night from Onondaga, the Onondaga Nation Arena, and then Four games, that's two games Friday there. Then four games here in Elmira on Saturday. And then the Sunday, we get the placement games, including the championship and bronze medal games. Three games in total on Sunday. Big weekend in St. Patrick's Day. Here's a chance and a goal. Jay Chubb, Carmen Papa, masterful performance shorthanded and makes the beautiful pass to a cutting Chubb. What a play. You can see Chubb just finishing. It's Stevens thinking far side with a really solid fake, then pulls it five hole. Oh, that's a beauty. That'll make it six to two for the Spark. First goal of the second quarter. Face off violation. So the Renegades will get the ball. They remain on the power play. Still 47 seconds in the first of the double minor to Tim Zimmel. Barrow Jr. and Rogers, the high man on the penalty kill. You've got Bill O'Brien and uh, Eddie Buhal are down low. Spin from Owen Hill. Hands it off in the rip from West Whitlow. That one stopped, stays in play. So Rogers comes away with it. He's trying to lead it ahead. I'm not sure Dwight Barrow thought he was going to throw that pass at him. I'm not entirely sure it was a great idea to try it, but it works out. Biro, the captain, comes away with it. Lobs a nice pass over to Schultzke, who had to go up and get it. Comes down, and he holds on to the ball. Great effort there by Schultzke. Runs into the double team and is able to run out of it. The wheel's on Schultzke. He is just buzzing around. Get it over to Napolitano, and Schultzke's going to go take a well-earned rest. The first penalty is over. We're into the second of the double minors to Zimmel. So successful kill, the spark with a shorthanded goal. It should make it 6-2. It's just one 5-2 on the board, but I think they just missed putting the last one up. Oh, what a back check by Casey Swamp to flatten Owen Hill. And Owen Hill's thinking, yo, he pushed me right on the back. Casey Swamp takes a bit of a shove and goes into the post, and I think the post lost that battle. The Man Mountain, Casey Swamp. What a gorgeous goal he scored earlier. Just racing down the floor after picking up a loose ball. Now Waylon Abrams tries a shot, but Edmund Cathers swallows it up. We're going to have a holding call coming. coming 
Looks like it'll be Justin Napolitano. So that's gonna make it five on three for the Renegades. Kenny at the top is going to be the safety valve. Owen Hill and West Whitlow. Top of the formation. Waylon Abrams, the fake. Owen Hill rips it, save Cathers. Bill O'Brien gets it, spins and stays out of the crease. Heads up playing. Waylon Abrams just went through the crease to check him and did not get called for a penalty, which probably should have. As an offensive player, you can't cut through the crease to take a shortcut and go check someone who has the ball. Defender, you can. Now, I can see, the thing is, once you're... You've turned the ball over, you become a defender, but you can't cut through the other team's crease. You can cut through your own crease. You can never cut through the other team's crease. Just a few seconds left on the 30. The shot clock, so Carmen Pava let one fly. It was wide and bounces into the spark bench. They'll leave it there for Justin McKinney. who will toss it ahead. 37 left in the five on three. Schultzke, Papa, and Rogers, the defenders. Nice try by Miller, taking the pass from Whitlow, but a little bit off track. Abrams, nice pass down. Miller rips one. Saved by Cathers. Nick Miller with quite the fan club here. He's on the back door looking for something. Abrams is going to fire it. I think that hit Rogers coming across. Kirby John just shakes his head. Nope, didn't get to the goalie. No fresh 30. It's going to be scooped up there by McKinney. Whips it over to Whitlow. They've got time. Oh, but they throw the ball away. Waylon Abrams will track it down. Now they're down to six to shoot. Hard pass across. Oh, nice leg save by Cathers as he left the trail leg down. It's a pretty good shot from Carson Reese, but just couldn't find the spot. Here's Nathan Schultzke. Over to Biro. 25 on the penalty. The second one. Uh, Zimmel has now been released. Napolitano. There's 10 on the shot clock, 17 on the penalty, so they can kill all but seven of it. To basically be taking care of the penalty. Oh, Palasek, looked like he was thinking about the diving dunk attempt. He's just gonna drop it behind the net as the buzzer goes for the 30. Napolitano's released and immediately double team on McNally, but McNally does a nice job of avoiding that check from Napolitano and Zimmel. Oh, a little hesitation fake by Lucas Maloney. Open things up and he got a pretty good break, but he was stopped and now breaking out of Zimmel. Takes a big swing check from Nick Miller. If there's no call, that's a heck of a defensive play. Diving, laying out, putting it all on the line. Big swinging wrap check as he did. And, and they love him here in Elmira. Owen Hill lost his stick. Scooped up and pushing it up the floor is Napolitano. Looking for somebody coming off the bench. Not really much help coming. Now he'll find Dylan Lyons. Sky, Sky Sunday had some room. Rips it. It was a little wide and high. Backdoor attempt. Quick stick beauty. What a finish by Sky Sunday on a beautiful pass from Dylan Lyons, who is just really making his mark in this game. It's the best effort I've seen from Dylan Lyons in the game. And Sunday just ready to tuck it home behind Gage Stevens. But apparently the scoreboard operators have decided not to put any more Syracuse goals up. That should make it seven to two. It's showing five to two on the board. I'm sure they'll get it sorted out at some point. Here's McKinney with the ball. Hey, there we go, it's seven to two. On the board and in real life. Here's Waylon Abrams. A little discussion down among the scoreboard operators and they got it sorted out. Bradley Voigt uses the pick, hands it off to McNally. Kind of backpedaling and a little reach around shot. Not bad. Voight tried the jump shot. Didn't quite work out how he was planning. What a pass ahead. No, a bit too far. Nice effort, but it's too much for Carmen Papa. That's too bad because we have seen some highlight reel stuff out of Carmen Papa when he gets into breakouts. 
Breakaways and going in alone on the goalie. McNally will hand it off as we go back the other way. Bradley Voigt takes it. Elmira. Boy, it was looking good there. Three to two, Owen Hill taking a penalty shot on the penalty and then instead that was turned aside. Syracuse has had a shorthanded goal. And here's another one, not coming though. Thought Dylan Lyons was gonna get it, but he was stopped by Gage Stevens who's been se severely tested in the game so far. Boy, in the first game, I think uh, the story was Jake Lazor playing that for Binghamton after he'd actually been dressed as a runner last week. And he was standing on his head to keep the Binghamton Bombers in that one. We ended up being 16-12, Jim Thorpe, but that is not on Jake Lazor from, from uh, the amount of the game. I was having to travel around, get ready, do a few things around the building to get ready for this game. But here is a breakaway. All alone, and Rio Johnson. That might have been too much time. He looked back, took a look at the goalie, looked back again, couldn't believe he had that much room. And just kind of may have gotten in his head a little bit. Stevens, though, with a nice save. And Monroe will toss it across to McNally, who pretends a little hidden ball trick. Not much there. Point to Abrams. Tries to feed it through to Owen Hill. It's grabbed with the open palm. And there's an outlet pass. That one, oh, it's off the stick of Delisle. He gets it back and shoots. Thought he was gonna turn around and come back, but trying to try the quick shot, I'm not sure he realized how little he had to shoot at from right where he was. Backdoor attempt by Bradley Voigt, but Edmund Cathers red pass the whole way as the ball went over to Carson Rees. Or sorry, that was Lucas Maloney, the righty on the far side. Here's a break the other way. Wait, Bucktooth is stopped. Gage Stevens shutting the door for a while. Here's Brett Logan, he's got the man off the bench. Scores, what a hero whistle, here's a no goal. John Civic adamantly, he's saying illegal substitution. He's telling Elmira they had six players on the floor. So it's no goal and the spark will go to the power play. And we will go to our media timeout of the second quarter with the Spark having pulled ahead 7-2 to two over the Elmira, Elmira Renegades in PBL action on Lacrosse TV. Welcome back to Lacrosse, friends. Syracuse has the ball. The goal was waved off, but I'm not sure why. We're still playing 5-on-5. Five five. No penalty assessed to Elmira, but the goal was waved off, and I'm sure I saw the illegal substitution indication. But... Nobody sent to the box, so we're just going to continue at five on five, and we'll see if we can figure that out for you. Should be a penalty for that illegal sub, but Elmira gets a, catches a break. Oh, but they're going to oh almost go over and back. Boy, Nick Miller having some trouble with that ball, and Rio Johnson also yeah, just switch it out. That's a bit of a lively ball. Carson Reese fires one. And see, it bounces right off of Edmund Cathers. That particular lacrosse ball is awfully sparky. We'll see what Rio Johnson can do with it. Whips it across. Hank Delisle, the alternate captain, takes the ball. There's Wade Bucktooth back to Rio Johnson. He wants to fire it. He bounces one, but see, it bounced too, too far on him. Somebody's going to toss that thing into the stands. Here's Delisle. Out front to Kai Sky Sunday, great pass back. Oh, Gage Stevens, did you get that? I thought it hit the post, but I think Gage Stevens might have got there. If so, that's a spectacular save. What a lovely little passing play as Elmira goes into the offensive zone. Just a, turns into a give and go as Hank Delisle goes straight back and I'm not sure, I was just watching the uh, the feed because it's a little behind the live here for us. I don't know, McNally gets flattened by Casey Swamp after throwing the BTB to nowhere. Here's Schultzke, the lettuce flowing out the back. Gets across with about a second to spare. He kind of stood and surveyed the floor for a while before he took off and then had to sprint. Good thing he's fast because he was able to get over center in time. That one bounces away and gets the same ball. 
Because Justin Napolitano had a little trouble with it. See, it's bouncing away from people. No problem, though, there for Eddie Buhal. He hauls it in. Napolitano trying to tuck that one home five hole. There was nothing there. Stevens just held his ground. He knew he had things locked up. Geddes. Geddes, sorry, running across center. Flings it on to Carson Rees. Here's Waylon Abrams. Loose ball gets free and Napolitano on the run. Stays on his offside. And Logan Monroe just shoves him into the corner. I think Justin Napolitano is going to get back to the bench and they're going to point out you need to get over to your strong side. Well, Ron Kogan's giving him a fist bump saying good effort. And then I think somebody's going to come and say, yeah, but get over to your own side. Carmen Papa, see what he can generate. Over to Rio Johnson. Waylon Abrams watching him. Pass to Papa gets loose. That one's well wide. It's going to bounce back over center. Owen Hill looking for a breakaway. See, the ball bounces away from him. Somebody toss that thing into the stands. We need a fresh, fresh piece of rubber out there. Abrams. Coming back up to the, oh, they're going to come to McNally. There it is. Knew he was going to get it eventually. Here's Bradley Voigt. Nice backdoor pass. Whitlow with a little sidearm sweep shot. But Evan Cathers is seeing the ball really well. Great outlet pass just too far. I guess it was a good outlet pass, not a great one. My Wade Bucktooth. Carmen Papa just about got his stick on it. He's running full tilt, had to throw the stick up. Jay Chubb goes in, picks up the loose ball after the check, and the shot is way off the mark. Heck of an effort by Chubb, but just couldn't contain the shot. Here's Logan over to Voigt. Ripped it to the far side, he was stopped. He had Chadwick on the back side of the back door, but, but Chadwick had left, he was on that far side. So again, we've seen a few instances where you, know, you just don't have players on their dangerous sides. Probably the right decision to try that shot. Here's Rio Johnson. What a sidearm ripped pass, but picked off by Voigt, who will lob it ahead. One hop pass. Oh, and Gaddis loses it, gets it back. O'Brien gives him a push. Nice stop by Cathers again. He's got Sky Sunday. Ah, that was a little tricky as McKinney was all over him. And then McKinney ties him up nicely. It's a heck of a play by Justin McKinney heading back. He's just been a solid player for this club all season long. In the season and now in the Jim Thorpe Challenge Tournament. I'm Steven Stamp. This is PBL on Lacrosse TV as Carson Reese trying to get away from Ross Gree, who takes a pretty big pick. Recovers, though. Gets back out to cover Napolitano. Sorry, Ross Cree. Oh, and Zimmel just flattens this guy, Owen Hill, after the shot. And, oh, but Waylon Abrams with the rip. That's, I thought that was, oh, that was close to end. Hit the crossbar and ricocheted down as Abrams just came up with that loose ball right in front of the crease. The shot by, by Miller just kind of bounces around. Well, Abrams picked off the pass. Uh, I don't think we got it. It was close though. Sometimes when they spin off the crossbar like that. What a save! Gage Stevens is putting on a clinic here in the second quarter. It was five to two at the end of the first quarter. Elmira hasn't scored here in the second, but they're fortunate to have only given up two is another save by Gage Stevens. The Spark have been peppering him with shots and he has been Outstanding, a timeout now for Elmira. You get one of those per half as well. So Brian Hobart is gonna set something up. He'll bring Gage Stevens to the bench and say, great half kid, have a seat there while we send out six attackers and see what we can do. They'd love to get back within four. And the fans who have made it through have braved the winter storm situation to get out to the arena, really enjoying the work by Gage Stevens. So we'll see what Elmira draws up. They're gonna have, looks like Whitlow, Voigt, Reese, Maloney. I have to assume Owen Hill's gonna be out there as their primary offensive threat. And it looks like Waylon Abrams is listening in as well, paying attention. So those will be your six attackers. Now 
The other side, Ron Kogan drawing up what he wants his guys to do. Looks like Napolitano, Schultzke, O'Brien, Buhal, and Biro may be the guys. Nope, Schultzke's just waiting for an opening to get into the bench. It will be Napolitano, Biro, Rogers, O'Brien, and Buhal. Oh no, it's Swamp as Napolitano goes back to the bench as well now. One last time, Rogers, Swamp, O'Brien, Biro, and Buhal. Waylon Abrams will start with it up at the top. And, and Elmira's only got five players on the floor. Now here we go. Bradley White will come and join him. He sat down and he wanted a little rest before coming out for this final possession of the half. Owen Hill is down on the left. He creased Bill O'Brien, keeping a close eye on him. He is the really dangerous one. They're, they've got some talent, but Owen Hill is the guy you really got to worry about. Here's Abrams. Voigt setting a pick as they go back to the far side. Eight seconds. We're going to see a shot. That could be dangerous. There's still three seconds. Bill O'Brien's going to scoop it up. Can't get a good four-check pressure so that the Spark couldn't get it and take a shot at the open net. And we will go to the half. Just two goals in that second quarter. I got to think that is the lowest scoring quarter in the brief PBLA and PBL history combined. So it is 7-2 for the Spark over the Renegades. I'm Steven Stamp. This is PBL Action on Lacrosse TV. We'll be back with the second half in 15 minutes. Hello, lacrosse friends, and welcome back to the first arena in Elmira. It is 7-2 for the Syracuse Spark over the Elmira Renegades. What a defensive battle of a second quarter. 5-2 after the first 15 minutes, and then just two goals in the second. Edmund Cathers was sharp for the spark in his net, but at the other end, Gage Stevens was spectacular, holding the spark with lots of chances to just two goals. I'm Steven Stamp. This is the PBL on Lacrosse TV. Thanks for being with us. Looks like we'll have Ross Cree taking the draw for the spark, who are going right to left here in the third quarter. You might notice a little different than some lacrosse box across that goes four quarters. Here you go, you defend the goal nearest your bench in the first and fourth. Gives you an edge in getting the goaltender to the bench for the extra attacker if you need to. Right now though, Ross Lyon, or uh, Dylan Lyons running around. He's been terrific. Hands it off to Hank Delisle. Rip from the outside by Jay Chubb. That one's wide. Did it go off the goalie? It did not, so that's an over and back. He'll have to put it down. Might have been lucky to get away with that one. Chubb didn't try to throw it away, but it kind of dropped it carelessly and it rolled back. Could have been called for delay game, but gets away with it and the Renegades will set up on the offense. Here's Nick Miller, Casey Swamp watching him. They switch up and Schultzke takes him. Brad Voigt with the pick. They try for the roll, but it was a little bit far for Voigt, who was trying to make sure the lane was still open. What a move by Carson Reese. Great little diagonal step, but he missed on the shot. Here's Schultzke getting out to Sky Sunday. Sunday taking his time as his teammates get out. Bill O'Brien out for the offensive shift. Throws a pick on Jimmy Chadwick. And now he's holding the stick of McNally, and it's a goal. And Elmira is a little displeased because they feel like there was a bit of an interference by O'Brien. It works, though. You can see it right there. <laughs> it's pretty clear that O'Brien was holding the stick, but very suddenly down by his hip. So he gets away with it, and that shot is just blasted home. Carmen Papa, who has done so much damage on the run for the spark, but this one, just the set offense with a little help from O'Brien. And it's eight to two, the spark running away, but that's gonna be danger of over and back, but nice play by Owen Hill to stop it and come away with the ball. <laughs> Here's Wes Whitlow, shovel pass back and the rocket from the top by Maloney, but it goes wide, picked up by O'Brien. Gets away from the four check from Waylon Abrams and goes for a run. Maloney on him now and O'Brien covering some turf, looking for the trailer. Oh, second man hits it to Lyons. Nice pass and the shot goes a little wide. Dylan Lyons is just a threat every time he's on the floor. That's a pretty nice setup by Bill O'Brien. Not generally known for the offensive side of his game, but 
That was a pretty heads up play. Definitely did not telegraph the pass, but got it through. Sky Sunday, the shot clock about to expire. Oh, what a goal! Sunday, with about three left on the shot clock, rockets one, well wide and high, goes off the glass, and Hank Delisle just scoops it up and tucks it home. That's a tough break for the Renegades. You see there, are five seconds on the uh, on the shot clock, and Sunday just blasts one from the outside. Dan Rogers up against Austin Finger. Rogers rips it out, but Palasek, who was racing in for the ball, kind of overran it. That's going to be grabbed by Joe Manicola. Smart play to get it to McKinney, but kind of missed the pass, but McKinney tracks it down. Trots into the offensive zone. He's going to find someone to pass it to and head for the bench. McNally leaving it there for Voigt. A pair of forwards cut through opening space, and Reese rips one, gets flattened by Casey Swamp. That is not the first time we've said that. It won't be the last Swamp who loves to lay the body. Does it very effectively. Here's Rio Johnson. We'll hand it off to Papa and head over towards the boards. We'll go down to Napolitano on his offside. Not sure why he keeps winding up over there. Illegal pick, though, I believe is called. It'll be Elmira Ball. Josh Harris, the former Brock Badger. And he is separated from the ball by Tim Zimmel. Oh, it's going to be an illegal cross check called. And Zimmel is disbelieving. He does not agree with that adjudication. I don't know. I'm quite sure what the call is. It got down on his hip a little, I think. Perhaps Zimmel was coming in from the side. Certainly wasn't. Uh, certainly wasn't from the back. Wasn't high, but it may have been low. May have got down on the hip. Anyway, Owen Hill will take his second penalty shot of the game. Cathers stoned him last time. Hill went to the far side. He's going to do it again, but much more. Smoothly, look at the moves by Owen Hill. I think it would be rare to stop him on two consecutive penalty shots. So Owen Hill gets the third goal. That's <laughs> just a lot of moves and Cathers just can't stay with them all. The thing is, you can throw fakes, but unless you're ready to shoot at any time there, how much are they gonna help you? Owen Hill can shoot it at any point while he's making those moves. Ross Cree somehow hold, held onto the ball just enough to get it over. Gage Stevens, another big save on Hank Delisle. He took the shot at the pass from Jay Chubb. Here comes Owen Hill, just scored. Now he's looking for the man off the bench. Oh, Wes Whitlow headed for the net before he had gotten the ball. It was very tight, I still think he's through the crease. But it doesn't matter as Cathers comes away with it. Here's Dwight Barrow, the captain. Nice little lob touch pass. A little high for Hank Delisle, but Delisle got it and gets it over to Lions. Nice play by Jimmy Chadwick to turn him aside and force him back. Delayed penalty coming to the Renegades. Cathers getting to the bench and the sixth attacker will come out. Sky Sunday is going to let it rip. He misses. Chadwick trying to come up with it so he can blow play down. It's grabbed by Sunday. Down to Papa. Just misses. He got the shot off before the buzzer. Hank Delisle wants a reset, but I think the 30 had actually gone before that ball hit Gage Stevens. It was pretty close. Now we'll see if Syracuse elects to use their penalty shot for the second half. They're up 9-3. to three. They may want to just let the time tick away with Elmira shorthanded. <clears throat> yeah, that's what they're going to do. Cathers goes back. Penalty killers will be Justin McKinney and Brett Logan at the top. The low men will be Josh Harris on the near side. And over on the far side is Joe Menicola. Penalty to be served by Lucas Maloney. Illegal substitution. Lefty strong again for Syracuse on the power play with Dylan Lyons at the top over to Rio Johnson. Down to Hank Delisle. Chubb and Sunday, the guys on this side, the righties. 
Everything just opens up and Lyons walks in. He kind of couldn't believe it. Ripped a shot, but Gage Stevens remains sharp. Behind the back pass, gets away from Logan, who has run over. Rio Johnson's the first guy there, double clutch, but he got it, and the Spark will go back to their power play set. They have to be careful with the changes because that can be tricky when <laughs> Rio Johnson, for no particular reason, <laughs> throws it a little around the world pass. It works, but uh, you know when, you, when the ball's turned over, Oh, backdoor pass. Backdoor quick stick by Sky Sunday. Fighting for the loose ball is Chubb. Logan getting in there and Dylan Lyons will come and get it. He's got the man behind the net, shoots, scores. Used the man behind the net as a decoy to Lyle and just rips one. Went to the other side. Last time he had a chance, he went by the right arm of Gage Stevens. This time he goes left arm, the non-stick side and tucks it home. It's just a beautiful finish. The point I was making is if you, you've got possession or, and you lose possession, you start to change, and then you forecheck and get it back, the most common thing for a guy who's going to the bench is just jump back on. And you can't do that. If you've gone in to the, the, your D door for the change, you can't step back on the floor. You've got to go somebody out the other door. But it's just instinct to head back out. And they did a nice job controlling themselves and that allowed them to set up for that beautiful goal by Dylan Lyons. Here's Owen Hill passing it across. Voigt at the top. Chadwick, nice feet to Owen Hill. What a play, great three-way passing play. Voigt to Chadwick to Owen Hill. Hill's got another one. Jimmy Chadwick with the beautiful setup. Had a nice chat with his dad, stopped by the booth just before the start of the second half. You may have actually heard him. As we were chatting, he was saying, I was saying Jimmy had a beautiful play last week. Uh, it's Go check the Lacrosse TV uh, Instagram and Twitter feeds, and you'll see Jimmy's gorgeous goal last week. That's a pretty nice goal by Owen Hill as well right there. But Chadwick with the dive, jump from behind the net, and uh, they captured it in a little highlight. Pretty fun. And uh, Butch was saying, yeah, you know, I told everybody, I taught him that. They said, you did that when you were younger? He's like, yeah, no cameras though. So I was like, yeah, so you can't prove it, but you can't disprove it either. I'm not sure Jimmy's dad ever jumped quite as high as Jimmy does. I know I haven't. Casey Swamp, the nice defensive play. And then another Rio. I don't think Rio Johnson's thrown a forehand pass today. It's all behind the back or around the world. He's fancy. It's working out okay. Boy, when you've got that kind of confidence and precision, Go ahead, there's a forehand pass over to Carmen Papa. They're give and go, almost finds the far corner. But Stevens took up a lot of net. It's grabbed there by Nick Miller. There's Rio Johnson with the forecheck. And he runs into Herbie John and gets the ball. O'Brien's coming. Oh, he had Napolitano again on his offside. Justin, go to your own side of the floor. There he goes. O'Brien to set the up pick. Open things for Carmen Papa who slips in the middle, Logan Monroe. Nice job noticing him. Physical defensive shift. But they get to the middle of the shot. Nice save again, Stevens. Oh no, it's a goal. I thought Stevens had it, but Tim Zimmel was able to squeeze that one through. And it is another goal for the Spark. And the Renegades just cannot keep up with this Spark attack. You can tell, it looked like Gage Stevens thought he had it because he just stayed still, which is the right move. If the ball is in your gear, you don't want to move and let it drop out and roll in, but didn't work out for him that time. Nobody else able to get in behind him before the ball rolled over the line. And it's 11 to four for the spark. Penalty coming as Owen Hill is on the turf. And I think he, he might be a little banged up. He looked like he didn't want to put any weight on his foot. Yeah, he's a little ginger as he comes up. It's going to be Dwight, Dwight Biro, tripping call, and a slash. So four minutes for Biro. The trip and then the slash while Owen Hill was on the ground. They have used their one penalty shot option for the half. But back-to-back -back power plays. Owen Hill's going to stay out there and tough it out. Love Whitlow and Reese will be their righties. The other lefties is a go lefty strong. Brad Voigt down on the goal line extended, and that's Waylon Abrams passing it to him. O'Brien and Swamp, the big men down low. Buhal and Dan Rogers, the little quick guys at the top. Hill gets through, gets the shot, scores. Owen Hill, that's at least three for him. 
get the penalty shot goal. He hit the last one in the pass from Chadwick. And then this one is just a beautiful placement. So they score the first one just 13 seconds into the first power play. You can see Hill just finding a spot. Cather's got a bit of it, but not enough. And now Elmira will try to get another one on the second half. That was on the tripping call to Bureau. Chadwick gets it ahead and they've got an opportunity. Whitlow fakes it behind the back to Chadwick. Chadwick will go off and the power play will come out. Whalen Abrams takes it. Looks like the same penalty killers. Nope, Ross Cree is out instead of instead of Rogers. Here's Miller with the rip. That one's wide. Almost took out John Civic. Oh, a bouncer from the outside by Whitlow. Chest or face save by Cathers. Buhal runs through the check for Miller. He's juking and jiving. Then he's stripped by Wes Whitlow. Syracuse gets away with one because he went out, went in the wrong door. I don't know the floor, but it's actually the further door, so I don't know. Maybe they're going to say that's okay. Oh, nice job to push him back in. West Whitlow with the four check. Shoves uh, Ross Cree into the crease to get possession back. They've still got just under a minute left on the power play, trailing 5 to 11. There's some room. Oh, what a hit, the double-decker. Swamp, as if Casey Swamp wasn't enough. Ross Cree jumped in as well. Now Bill O'Brien with the long bounce pass. What a move to get it back from Delisle. Behind the back, just getting enough with Gage Stevens. Boy, Hank Delisle lost his balance, lost his footing. Kind of stumbled, but still was able to make a great move. Myra will slow things down. They've got 10 left on the penalty on the power play. Looks like they're going to wait and not potentially take to not take a shot here. Oh, oh, and Hill had no idea that ball was coming. Missed a stick, hit him in the face, bounced here. Now Abrams shoots. That could be a breakaway from Bureau, but it's grabbed by Carson Reese instead. No fresh 30, but they go back door. Oh, Voigt just lost it. He was trying to keep his toes out of the crease, trying to get the shot, and it just kind of floated up out of his stick. Ooh. This is a pretty nice pass from Bureau, but he kind of set Napolitano up to take a hit, but Napolitano quickly grabbed it, was very alert to get away from that potential brain, I don't know, I don't know, body rattler, I guess you'd call it. Here's Palisak. Oh, nice behind the back to Rio Johnson. And then Johnson cross checks Owen Hill from behind into the crease. And that knocked the uh, that knocked the ball in, I think, but it's waved off. The low to high from Whitlow went too high. It's going to be an over and back, and Nick Miller is just going to kind of wobble back down. He's looking a little tuckered. See how he does on this D shift. We've got just under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Drive by Palisic, another day nice save, Gage Stevens. It's 11-5 Syracuse, it could be 20 by now. But he has been solid, here's Dylan Lyons using referee Herbie, Miller, Herbie John as a uh, pick. That pass gets away, nicely passed out by Miller. I don't know, he may have been tired, but he made a pretty sharp pass. He and Lyons having some words. Lyons turns to the official and says, you see what he's doing? I think Herbie John said, deal with it. Carson Reeves will lob it up to Abrams and get it back. 10 on the shot clock. It is feisty in front. Nate Schultzke tangling up with Lucas Maloney and then Maloney just grabs onto his stick and holds it for a while. The 30 eventually expires as Schultzke gets from his job. Boy, those two are getting into it. They're still talking, Schultzke's talking. Maloney is not and Brad Voigt says, just go to the bench. Oh, nice shot by Sunday, another great save by Gage Stevens. He has really been sharp. I'm Steven Stamp. This is PBL Action on a stormy Friday night. 
in Elmira on Lacrosse TV. So glad you can be here with us. Hope you are warm and cozy wherever you are watching. Here's Napolitano. Nice pick from O'Brien. Drives, but another save from Gage Stevens. McNally zipping over center. Over the head check attempt by Napolitano. Nicely avoided by McNally. And here's Hill. He seems to be moving pretty well after getting tripped up and a little shaken up. Backdoor pass by Whitlow, but it gets away from Voigt. Now Hill can't get it. Good effort there by Carmen Papa. Still buzzing after, but it's going to bounce to Hill. He can't come up with it, and Bill O'Brien will shove him aside. O'Brien comes through the check, looking up the floor. He's four-checked. Nice job by Abrams to get it loose, but O'Brien trying to recover. This is a big battle. They're going to run out of time in the second count. And it'll be Elmira Ball. Great four-check by Whalen Abrams. Abrams picks O'Brien just as he's about to whack Owen Hill. O'Brien says, I don't like when you stop me from hitting people, so he hits Abrams. And Abrams returns the favor with a one-hand thwack onto Justin Napolitano, who's heading over towards the bench. Going to hand the ball off and I assume go for a change. Yes. Oh, Papa couldn't quite get it. Looking to make a move before he had the ball. He's watched by Logan Monroe. Ball bouncing around. Nice pop by Papa on, on uh, Brett Logan. There's Casey Swamp out for the O-shift. It's a pretty nice move, and he gets the shot off. If you were here for early in the game, you saw a beauty from Casey Swamp. Oh, Logan almost run over by Tommy Palasek. Palasek kind of pulled up, and Logan protected himself well. But Casey Swamp picked it up. The loose ball may have picked it off and rumbled the length of the floor and buried a lovely shot. Oh, nice backdoor attempt there by Lucas Maloney. Just didn't quite connect with Chadwick, but he does get it now. Double team, knocked to the floor and comes away with the stick of Buhal. And play's gonna be blown down. We're gonna have a holding penalty on, I'm not sure, but with 148 to go, we are gonna have the media timeout here on Lacrosse TV, it's 11.5 Spark. I'm Steven Stamp, come back and join us with more PBL action. Welcome back, lacrosse friends, to PBL Action on Lacrosse TV. I am Stephen Stamp. It's 11 to 5. Spark over Renegades. 148 to go here in the third quarter. The Renegades are trying their darndest to get back, but the Spark just are finding chances here and there. They could be way ahead, Syracuse could, but Gates Stevens has been great. Edmund Cathers has been very sharp. We're in the orange as well. There's Owen Hill. Goes low to high. Pretty good shot option but did not get it where he wanted. Now Cather's looking down the floor to Dan Rogers. He was covered nicely by Carson Reese back in transition defense. So they make the short pass and here's Dwight Bureau Jr. He's gonna find Schultzke coming off the bench. Nope, he's gonna wait, let Schultzke run by and throw it to the more open Justin Napolitano, who, heavens be praised, comes to his correct side for the penalty kill. The 30 expires, and Paul Tanner was going to let it one rip, but realized the 30 had expired, heard the buzzer, and here comes Elmira onto the power play. Schultzke and Paul Tanner at the top of the penalty kill. Jay Chubb and Dan Rogers, the low men. So none of the big guys, O'Brien and Swamp not out there, but a quicker power play, I would think. It almost comes out to Voigt off the boards after it got away from Waylon Abrams. It's lefty strong again for Elmira with Owen Hill to Waylon Abrams. His shot is blocked by Rogers. Oh, but it goes right to Waylon Abrams, and he has Edmund Cathers at his mercy. Shows none, buries it. Power play goal, Renegades, they are closing the gap. They're within five, and there is a lot of time to go. Look at the chance there for Abrams. <laughs> a lot of these guys have played with and against each other in other leagues. You can see the camaraderie. They're having fun out there. It's intense competition and they will bury each other when they get a chance to lay a big hit but they're also having a lot of fun with each other watching the, the earlier game from down at floor level in the corner Jake Lazor had one where somebody he knows pretty well scored on him and he gave him a tab and said nice play I'm going to get you next time and you just see how much fun they were having but it's 11-6 as the third quarter has 8 seconds to go Whitlow 
trying to work his way through. Sky Sunday is opposite number 71 on him. Outside shot saved by Cathers. Geddes, good decision to get one off, but he couldn't get it through. And we will go to the intermission with the score. Syracuse 11, Elmira 6. I'm Steven Stamp. This is the PBL on Lacrosse TV. We'll see you in two minutes. Welcome back, lacrosse friends, to PBL action on Lacrosse TV. 15 minutes to go. The Renegades creeping back into it. They're within five. It's 11 to six spark. It's gonna be tough for the Renegades though when they've got six through 45 minutes to come up with five in 15 minutes while not giving up any goals to the dynamic and explosive Syracuse Sparkle Muffins. Finger and Rogers on the battle. Finger, nice win. He's heading on his own towards the net. Shoots, save Cathers. No, he scores. I thought the ball, that was the ball, but it was actually a strap of Cathers. It was hanging down and uh, dropping between his pads. The ball found its way through. Austin Finger, one of the players this league is designed for. A young American player with some tremendous talent. Look at that. Oh, it did. Cather's got a bunch. A pair of spark players diving to try and stop the ball from getting through. Finger just creeps it through him. Cather's actually putting the stick behind him to try and trap it between his foot and his stick may have actually knocked it in with the backside of the stick. Tommy Palasek, nice job to whip in and get that one. And Syracuse has possession, but it's a four goal game. Rio Johnson lobs it up. That shot is blocked. Nice job there by Justin McKinney, who's having a, another solid game for the Renegades. Did go back to Syracuse. They've got six on the shot clock. Probably want to send somebody to the bench. There you go, Sky Sunday making his way to get a change. And so is Jay Chubb. Sunday almost went to the wrong door again. Here's Joe Menicola. Oh, the pass doesn't connect with Owen Hill. I think Hill was getting ready to shoot. I think Dwight Biro, who's a wily veteran, but may have made a mistake there with Menicola. Not as much of a threat, especially on his offside as Owen Hill. Oh my goodness. Hank Delilah's just grabbing onto the sleeve of Owen Hill and tugging him around. That one's missed. Gets away with it. <laughs> Owen Hill just kind of, it looked like he kind of laughed from up here. But... Guess if he get away with it. Here's Rio Johnson. Sparkle try to Get back rolling as they have given up a few goals in a row now. Napolitano, nice little move. O'Brien opens up some seats for him. Napolitano hands it off. Zimmel behind the net to Johnson. Nobody's there to pass, so he's going to come out and get a shot off. They're into the last four seconds of the shot clock. Napolitano trying to stay with McKinney. Does a good job, but up ahead, all alone, Nick Miller. He's had a quiet night, but that was vintage Nick Miller. He's a fan favorite for just that kind of play. And what a beautiful pass ahead to set him up. You can see Miller taking it right there. And he is quick on the release to get that one off. Nice pass, nice finish. Don't go anywhere. I actually saw, I think, a few fans Get up putting their coats on at the quarter mark. And I think they may be ruining that decision. As it is now just a three goal game, the Renegades are on a roll. 11 8. They were down 11 5, maybe even been 11 4. Here's Lions. Oh, that's a beauty. Dylan Lyons has been very good tonight, and that is the best play he has made yet. Look at that. Ducking underneath, reaches far side, keeps the toes out of the crease. Justin McKinney can't believe it. I think it was McKinney on him. Where was he? Cannot believe that play by Dylan Lyons. Made a 12-8, snapping the run of the Renegades. But it's still only four goals, and they've got 13-01 to get them. Big battle off the faceoff. Lyons is swatted at. Nice effort by Finger, but it goes to Buhal. He's got some pressure on him from Brett Logan. He'll... Hand it off to Sky Sunday. Pujol headed for the bench. That's a bit of a feint, I think. Came back. He is the high man. Delisle looking up there. He's going to lob it across to Pujol. Five on the shot clock. Delisle ducks it under. Gets a shot. Nice save, Stevens. I thought Delisle had him off his post, but 
Stevens kept that left arm out just enough to stop it. Logan, oh, that's a lovely little reverse whip pass. But it's an eight second count. That was a quick eight seconds. Schultz keep pushing it for the spark. Oh, nice move. Not such a good finish. Schultz, great effort, nice spin to duck underneath, but I think he lost his balance a bit and kind of lost control of the ball as he was diving forward. Nice effort though by Schultz, who is a high energy guy. Here is McKinney over to Nick Miller. Oh, he's feeling it. You knew he wanted that one. He rips it. The save by Cather straight back to Miller and Carson Reese is looking for somebody. Whitlow tries to cut. Schultz on him. Nice two-man defense with Schultz and Palasek, who picks off the pass. That's great two-man D. Palasek looked for a second like he might have lost his man, but was recovering and got the pass out. And this sets it up. Oh, Sunday has stopped. Or Carmen Papa, sorry. One-hand pickup. Reverse whip attempt. That one's wide. Here comes Jimmy Chadwick. He's got the man off the bench. Bradley Voigt all alone. Misses. Oh, again, may have had too much time. Here comes Wade Buck. Just, whoa. Throws it down by the ankles of Rio Johnson, who has quick hands and is able to pick it up. He is taking a bit of a pounding there from Logan Monroe. McKinney and Monroe playing the two-man defense. They pick up Zimmel heading in, and Syracuse will set up their D. Their O. Nice job there by Menicola to drive Napolitano into the corner. Four on the shot clock. Sky Sunday will just let one, or Ross Crease, sorry, let one rip. Napolitano was about to pick it up, but the 30 was expiring. Here comes McNally. Ran into some trouble. Great job to just swat it over to Lucas Maloney. This is an impressive effort by the Elmira Renegades who have not given up, just working, working, working. Another bare hand palm grab, or palm of the glove grab by Edmund Cathers. If you're a young goalie, do not do that a lot. Make sure it's a pass like that that's just kind of a, a little floater, not too much on it, because you don't want to try and grab the hard shots like that. There is no padding, and that will hurt you a lot. Cathers knows when to do it. Delisle, nice moves, but Carson Reese with him. Great pass. What a finish, Jay Chubb. Hank Delisle, just lovely. That is the skill that Hank Delisle brings to the game. And a nice shot by Jay, Jay Chubb, too. Gage Stevens was just frozen. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just watching the feed. Dylan, they gave the, the assist to Dylan Lyons. That's a mistake. It was Hank Delisle, no question, and a beautiful play by Delisle. Rio Johnson can't handle the pass, but he corrals it off the boards. Watch there by McKinney. They go behind the net. Oh, nice return pass, and Johnson so smooth with the behind the back, but he has stopped. Kick that pass from Carmen Papa. Really digging Carmen Papa's game. Not the biggest dude, but boy, he can play. That shot was blocked. Nick Miller tried to get it through. Nathan Schultzke gets a bit of it. Dunk diving attempt by Chadwick. Can't quite capitalize this time. And here comes the spark the other way. Nice job by Cathers to stay on that post. The, the Attempt if you're as a lefty like Chadwick, you want to come to the right as you're facing up from behind the net because that's the easier one to tuck in, but Cathers knew that. Here's Maloney. Oh, that's quite a move and what a save. Almost back in, Dwight Barrow though had just stepped in the crease before he grabbed it. Hank Delisle climbs the ladder to get the pass, gets it across. They're looking return pass, but he was picked up. Lions fell. Now Syracuse will slow things down a bit, under nine to go. 13-8, five goal lead for the Spark. The fourth quarter though, really a strong one for the Renegades. Nice work there by Jeff Geddes to swat that stick away and come off with the ball. Bounces a pass to Owen Hill. Cather stops it with a huge assist from Dwight Biro. Just tangling up Owen Hill a little bit. Ross Cree has it. Handing off. Sky Sunday looks around, makes sure he knows where everybody is. Now he's going to go to the bench. Zimmel passes it behind. Joe Buhal looks like he's thinking diving dunk, but 
Gage Stevens is ready for him. The 30's gonna expire as Bill O'Brien attempts to take that pass. It'll be Nick Miller with it. Wisely just waits for a second for everyone to clear, sees where all the orange jerseys are and then trots up over center. Still has the ball across the restraining line. He's gonna rip it, saved by Cathers. Not sure that's your shot. Although you're down by five with seven and a half, eight minutes to go. You gotta try some things, but I mean, that was just a wide open look. Edmund Cathers, whoa, what's, what's that call? John Civic just stopped the ball and then blows play in. Cathers is still wondering what's going on. He's talking to the official. The play is blown in and there's a shot off the post before anybody was ready. I'm not sure what the call was as Cathers tried to tap it ahead. And John Civic actually just stopped it with his foot to give, give possession over to Elmira on the violation. Turned into a pretty sc good scoring chance because Cathers was still arguing. Here's Bucktooth, he's gonna get a pick from Delisle. Or not, because McNally is just all over him. Maloney lost it. The 30 went. Pass ahead, nicely grabbed there by McKinney. Carmen Papa on him. <laughs> McKinney to Voigt. You can really see how the teams are getting used to getting their offensive players out for offense, defensive players out for defense as much as possible. You, you do see a fair bit of, I mean, Syracuse for sure likes to run the three lines of five and just keep rolling guys out. But they will also, you know, they're going to move. They're going to get guys, defenders out and get forwards out. Kind of a hybrid system where you get a couple of guys, two or three guys will be changing while some others run. You gotta have somebody run back on D because with the change rules where you have to go into your defensive door, come out your offensive door again, if you try and change from O to D, you're losing twice the length of the bench. Rio Johnson very calmly just rolls one over under double team pressure, gets to Sky Sunday, keeps moving and Lions gets it back to Johnson. Oh, he hits Lions, nice save by Gage Stevens. That was a pretty play. Dylan Lyons heads over to the middle. Big swing there, another one. Rio Johnson is just swatting away at Joe Menicola, who is unperturbed and gets it ahead to Whalen Abrams. Leaves it for McKinney. McKinney heads for a change after passing it into the corner. Here's Owen Hill, a little swim. Lucas Maloney, we're into the media timeout spot. Nice attempt on the back door for Abrams. The 30 will expire. Oh boy. Now, is there a hand going up? Because Bill O'Brien just swatted somebody. Wes Whitlow having a word with him. Looks like Syracuse has possession, but Waylon Abrams is kind of tapping at Bill O'Brien's stick. Yeah, it's going to be Syracuse possession. Waylon Abrams has to back off a bit. Here's O'Brien with the ball. Loses his balance, but keeps his head about him and makes the pass across. And it's a timeout, Syracuse. With 5.07 to go, I think Ron Kogan has called a timeout so they wouldn't lose possession. It's 13 to eight, 5.07 to go, a five goal differential. And the spark, remember they were up five to two after the first quarter, then seven to two at the half. So since then, it is a six, six game here in the second half. Now, you know, moral victories are not victories, but Elmira's got to feel pretty good about the game they're playing here in the second half. A few lapses that they're not going to be thrilled with, but uh, for the most part, they're playing a gritty and resilient game. Really like what they've been doing. Ron Kogan talking to his guys. Seems to be pretty calm. I think he's, you know, in this case, just saying, guys, just keep playing, play smart, settle down. Five oh seven to play. 13-8, the Spark lead the Renegades. Remember, next week we'll be back here Friday night once again in Elmira at First Arena for more PBL action on Lacrosse TV. Check out the Lacrosse TV Twitter feed and Instagram, I believe. Not as big an Insta guy, but I do enjoy it.
Anyway, check them to see what is coming up. Hope you're enjoying the game tonight. Quick shout out to my beautiful and supportive wife, Carrie McMaster, who I'm sure is enjoying the game and gave me the heads up that while I was chatting with, with Butch Chadwick at halftime that the mic was on and y'all could hear it, I suppose, although she said it was faint. We didn't say anything bad. It was all good. We're just catching up. That's one of the nice things. You catch up with some folks when you come to these games and you get to see people from the lacrosse community. Uh, Butch Chadwick's a great example. Curtis Kong O'Brien, the brother of Bill O'Brien, who uh, came by, had a nice chat. He is a beauty looking sharp. He has got the hair on point. Great style. He said, well, I got a girlfriend now. I got to gotta look good. Got to look good for her. But uh, he's here with their mom and his girlfriend, and obviously having a uh, good time, and I think we're going to the media timeout. We'll be back with more PBL on Lacrosse TV in two minutes. See you then. Welcome back to Lacrosse Friends 2, first arena in Elmira for PBL action on Lacrosse TV. I'm Stephen Stamp, pleased to be bringing you this Syracuse Elmira game. Remember, next Friday we will have another double header of PBL action. Nice feed, but I think we're going to see an illegal pick called. Next week's games will complete a round robin in these doubleheaders. What a pass ahead. Just too much slow for Owen Hill. He had the man all over him. Great job hustling back by Carmen Papa to deny Owen Hill the pass. The 5 o'clock game next week here at First Arena will be Binghamton and Syracuse. And then the 8 o'clock game will be Elmira against the Jim Thorpe All-Americans. There will be another doubleheader the following week. No, wait, the following week is the seven-team tournament in a couple games Friday night on a dog and then four games. Oh, we're going to get back to that. Voigt, he stopped again. Brad Voigt has had some chances. He's been getting airborne, but just has not been finding his spots. But yeah, that St. Patrick's weekend, Friday night, two games in Onondaga Nation Arena, four games Saturday here in Elmira, and then Sunday, all the placement games, including the Players Invitational Championship game. Chadwick, nice bounce pass. Oh, but a good save by Cathers. Great play by Chadwick to bounce that one ahead to Waylon Abrams. He and Dwight Bureau share a bit of a laugh. As I said, the competition's intense, it's physical, fast, but the players also, there's a lot of respect, a lot of fun among all these players. Here's Nate Schultzke. Schultzke on his offside, gives it off, and Starts to head around. He's going to stay out there. Ooh. Kirby John <laughs> tapping his shoulder. I think he's saying that was a check on the shoulder. Looked kind of from behind to me. But now do we have a call? Yeah, Tim Zimmel is back to the box. He's been heavily penalized tonight. Oh, they're going to say holding. Zimmel's pretty unhappy. And, you know, he's got at least four penalties. He had the double minor earlier. Yeah, I don't think Syracuse is very happy because their player was knocked down with the check in the back of the head. No call. And then one of their players laying down. And Zimmel grabbed somebody as they went by. There's a hard rip from Abrams. And Dan Rogers was taken off for the breakout chance, but nice four check pressure. By the Renegades. Picked up there by Whitlow, fresh 30. Beerwin Rogers, the high man on the penalty kill. O'Brien and Buhal down low. They tried back door to Whitlow on the offside. He couldn't quite corral it. And Cathers looking to see who can pass it. He's gonna find somebody off the bench. Nice bouncer ahead. Well handled by Napolitano who runs away from trouble. Smart play. He's gonna try and push it deep. Thought he might circle around the net, but with nine left in the shot clock as they're killing the penalty, he's just gonna hang on to it. Nobody pressuring him. Carmen Pop is over waiting for a pass. He needs to head to the bench. The shot clock's about to expire. Oh, that's gonna be delay a game. Rio Johnson, that's a mistake. The 30 had clearly gone and then he let it go. Rio Johnson saying he couldn't hear anything, but you know what? He's looking at the net and seriously, the shot clock and game clock behind the net, sorry, the sir, big sir, red, red lights around the entire thing light up. I don't think he can make that argument. 
very uh, successfully. Totally five on three for 46 seconds. Justin McKinney will be the safety valve up top. Owen Hill will start with the ball. Waylon Abrams, the other lefty. Whitlow and Reese, the righties. O'Brien, Biro Jr. and Rogers are the defenders. Waylon Abrams, a couple of fakes. Skip pass to Whitlow, behind the back. Reese, I thought he had a chance to shoot there, but the spin underneath by Hill, that's a good chance. The save though by Cathers, that's a big stop, because now there's only 30 seconds left in the penalty. It's about a second difference, but Cathers, nobody to pass to as they're down the four on the five on three. So he just rolled it as far as he could. And there's still some time. Elmira can have a good go here on the four on three. And they don't even have to worry about shooting late in the 30 or late in the penalty because they've got their man back, McKinney, as the safety valve. The Zimmel is out in three seconds. See, they can go ahead and shoot here if they want to. Don't have to worry about him breaking away. Oh, Whitlow misses the pass. Here comes Zimmel. Whitlow sees him and avoids the check. It's regular five on four. McKinney goes to the bench to get another forward. It's Jimmy Chadwick coming on the floor. Skip pass. Whitlow straight back to, to Waylon Abrams. And Chadwick went <laughs> to the bench. Voigt came out. They turn the ball over, Voigt goes to the bench, and somebody else comes out. Elmira, a nice job handling the changes on the bench. Heads up play, nobody making a mistake. Keeping their heads about them, they've been very poised. We're down to the final minute, it's 13 to eight. The Renegades are not gonna come back and win this game, but again, 6-6 since the half. The second half has been a 6-6. That one was almost in, just rocked the crossbar, the whole net shaking. Chadwick is down. Zimmel standing over him. Jimmy shakes his hand, <laughs> shakes his glove, says, you want to go? Zimmel says, nah. I'm good. We're up 13-8. Hank Delisle. And they can kill it all. Napolitano, double team coming. He'll run out of it. Nice wheels. Boy, Napolitano is quick. He's giving him a bit of a hard time today about going to his offside, but he's done some pretty good things too. Logan all over him. Napolitano says, no problem. I'm just going to hang on to this ball, and then we are going to win the game in five, four, three, two, one. Rio Johnson gets out and tries the around the world that somehow got actually pretty close to getting on net as he was at goal line extended. That was a pretty nice play. The final score, Syracuse 13, Elmira 8. This has been PBL action on Lacrosse TV. What a fun game, a 6-6 second half after the big 7-2 first half for Syracuse. Next Friday, again, 5 p.m., we will see Syracuse and Binghamton in the first game. Then the eight o'clock game, we'll see the home Elmira Renegades and the Jim Thorpe All-Americans. If you're anywhere near Elmira, I would say get down here, watch the games in person. They are a lot of fun in the arena. If you're not nearby, Stay with us on Lacrosse TV. We are pleased to have you along watching, and you can go back and watch the games on Lacrosse TV's YouTube channel afterwards. I am Stephen Stamp. It has been my pleasure to bring you this exciting PBL action on Lacrosse TV. We'll see you next time.